This video is brought to you by MacBack. Today I'm going to be showing you the top 25 settings you need to change on your Galaxy S24 or Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now some are going to be security related, others will help save battery or improve your performance, and others even unlock new features. But all of these are going to be impactful changes and are going to make your experience on your Galaxy phone even better. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so to start, we're going to look at some essential security related settings. And the first of which is we're going to improve the face unlock on your Galaxy phone. So to do this, first, we're going to jump on into settings and then we're going to scroll to where we find security and privacy. And then from here, we're going to tap on biometrics. So right here and then we're going to tap on face recognition. Now, at this point here, we're going to have to type in our pin. And this is going to bring us to this screen here where there are three settings that I highly recommend you change. And the first of which is stay on lock screen until swipe. And this is one that's on by default. And what that's going to require you to do is even after your phone has already recognized your face, you're still going to have to swipe to then fully unlock uh, and get to your home screen. If we go ahead and turn this off, which is what I recommend, as soon as your phone recognizes your face, it's automatically going to unlock the phone and bring you to your home screen, essentially making the unlock faster. And beneath that, we have the option to require open eyes when unlocking the phone. Now, this is something that is off by default, but I highly recommend you turn this on as this is going to add an additional layer of security, not only requiring you to be in front of your phone to unlock it, but also to have your eyes open looking at the phone. So I definitely recommend you keep this on. And beneath that, we have the brighten screen option. And basically what this is going to do uh, is if, say, you're using your phone late at night, it's going to brighten the screen to then brighten your face to make it more easy to unlock. Uh, this is something that in general you can keep on. Personally, I do turn this off. I find that when I'm using my phone late at night, uh, I don't want it to be blinding me. So in that case, I do turn this off and instead, for example, use the fingerprint scanner uh, or the pin to unlock my phone if ever it is too dark. So those three settings should definitely improve the security and just your general experience using the face recognition on your Galaxy phone. Next, we're going to enable a feature called offline finding. And to do this, we're going to go one page back. So on the main screen of the security and privacy page here. And this time we're going to tap on lost device protection. And you're going to want to make sure that offline finding is turned on. Now, what this is going to do is if, say, your phone is ever lost and even without cell service or Wi-Fi connection, what it's going to use is it's going to use Galaxy phones around it to try to locate your phone and still show you the location of your phone online in efforts to hopefully find it, even if you are offline. So if ever your phone gets lost or stolen, having this on will definitely increase the chances of you finding it and still being able to locate it. And then for an extra layer of protection, uh, what you can do is tap into offline finding and actually encrypt your offline location. This means you're going to set up a separate pin for this and it's then going to require that pin in order to see your phone's location. So something I do suggest you turn on just for an additional layer of security. And this brings us to more of a privacy related setting in which we're going to hide the content of your notifications as long as your phone is locked. So let's say you get a message. Uh, you don't want that to appear on your lock screen and then show the entire message itself so long as your phone is still locked. So to go ahead and set this up, what we're going to do is unlock the phone, of course, uh, and then in the settings app, we're going to jump into notifications and then we're going to tap on lock screen notifications. And then here we have the option to hide the content. Now, uh, this is something I recommend you do again, primarily for privacy reasons, but also if say your phone is ever lost or stolen, you wouldn't want Want that person to be able to read your notifications so i suggest hiding the content for all of them so this means you'll still see that there's a notification but the content will only show once you unlock your phone all right this next one is super crucial and probably one of the first things i change on any new galaxy phone or any new android phone for that matter and that is a change to the navigation bar making it so much easier to navigate the phone also more quickly uh, and even saves you some screen space so let me show you how to change this uh, over in settings we're going to scroll down to where we find display and then scroll down to where we find there it is, navigation bar, we'll tap that. And then we're gonna change from the default button layout, which is what you see here, to those swipe gestures. Now, the default button layout works fine, don't get me wrong, uh, but the thing I don't really like about it is it's not as intuitive. And you can see that it does take up some screen space when say I'm in another app, where if I go ahead and change this to the swipe gestures and go back to the same photos app here, you'll see we actually get more screen space. And I find it so intuitive to be able to just swipe to see between your recent apps. You can also swipe left and right to quickly switch between apps. So I definitely think uh, that this is the better approach to take even if it may take a little bit of getting used to, but I highly recommend changing this to the navigation bar and then the swipe gestures. Oh, and also one neat gesture that I want to show you with these swipe gestures is how to go back on an app because you no longer have that back button. Uh, instead of always having to reach for the top left corner, you can actually swipe from the side of the display. And what is also cool is you can actually swipe from either side of the screen. So if you have your phone in your right hand, even swiping on the right will bring you back uh, as well as swiping to the left. 
Now the S24 Ultra uh, as well as the S24 Plus are large phones. So it is really important to make use of all that large screen space. And a great way to do so is to actually have more apps on screen at a time. So let me go ahead and show you how to increase the grid size so you can make more or take more advantage rather of this large screen. So to do this, we're gonna jump into the settings app here and then we will scroll down to where we find home screen. And here we have the option to change the grid size, not only for the home screen, uh, but also for your app screen. But let me go ahead and show you what this difference makes here. So here we have my current home screen. And as you can see, uh, by default, it has a four by five grid, which means five apps in the uh, forward vertical. And then we have uh, four apps in the horizontal position here. Whereas if I go ahead and change that, as you can see, the icons got a little bit smaller, but that will allow me to store way more apps on my phone. Uh, I don't know about you, but I like to have my apps right on the front, right here, super easy to access. Uh, and this here allows me to have more apps at once and more easily accessible. A quick but very useful setting to change is for how your phone sorts the uh, applications you have in your app drawer. Now, if you're like me, you probably have quite a few applications and by default, they'll just be sort of arranged randomly or in the order that you install them. What you can actually do is tap on the three dot menu here and then tap on sort. And then we can go ahead and change and sort it into alphabetical order. And this is gonna make it much easier and more quick, I think, to find an application, especially if you have many, as it'll be in alphabetical order, uh, making it much easier to see where that app will be. Will it be sort of towards the front or towards the back? All right, so this next tip applies only to the S24 Ultra. Most here apply to both phones, but in this case, that's only for the Ultra, and that is to change your screen resolution. So to do this, we're gonna jump into settings, and then over in the main page on settings, we're gonna tap on the display, and then we're going to scroll down to where we find the screen resolution. Now, by default, it's going to be on full HD+, and this gives you the best balance between good-looking visuals and still using moderate amounts of battery. But if you want to take full advantage of this excellent display, you can increase the resolution to quad HD+. You can see that brings it up to a 3120 by 1440p resolution. And this is going to give you the best quality and the sharpest visuals. But it is important to note that this will take a little bit of extra battery. So it really depends on what you prioritize. Next, I wanna show you how to activate the always on display, a super handy feature to quickly glance at your phone for the time, for example. You can see I've got mine set up here. Uh, and to activate this, we're gonna go into settings and then we're gonna to scroll to where we find lock screen and AOD. So AOD is always on display. And then first you're gonna make sure that your always on display is toggled on. And once it is, we can actually tap on that to bring up this additional menu and you can customize this further. So you can go ahead and show or hide your wallpaper. You can see you can turn that off. It gives you a little preview. Uh, this perhaps is a little less distracting. It won't be as bright. Uh, I like to show a bit of the wallpaper. I think it adds a of character uh, you can also choose to hide your uh, your music information as well and an important setting here is when to show now by default this will be set to either always or to tap to show um, personally i think auto is the best option because Having an always on display will of course use a little bit of battery, but there's a really efficient way to have it. And that is to use the auto setting. And what this is going to do is under normal circumstances, it's gonna show you your always on display like this when it detects that your phone is say uh, resting on your desk. However, when you have your phone in your pocket, your phone will detect that and will actually turn off the always on display preserving battery life. So that's why I recommend you use the auto mode for when to show your always on display. Before we get back to more software tips, I do have one very important hardware tip, and that is to protect your Galaxy phone, particularly the expensive S24 Ultra with MacBack. MacBack adds not only protection, but also functionality to your Galaxy S24 Ultra, letting you mount it virtually anywhere. This is the MacBack case in black. It comes in a variety of colors and is made of a really nice grippy and impact absorbent silicone material that is drop tested for up to six feet. My favorite feature of the MacBag case is not only that it adds MagSafe functionality to your Galaxy phone, but also that it is compatible with these, MagSticks. And this means you can virtually mount your phone to any surface by simply adding a MagStick. For example, say a kitchen, a wall, or even a dashboard. And then if the surface is already metallic, you can simply place your phone to mount. The extensive array of magnets inside the case also lets you add accessories like this. This is the MacBack leather wallet. And because MacBack uses more magnets than traditional MagSafe, uh, the magnetic strength is actually far superior. In fact, two to three times stronger than traditional MagSafe, which for a wallet is especially important. MacBack went even further by adding additional functionality. So for example, you can fold out the wallet and then use it as a stand to prop up your phone, say on your desk. Uh, it also has a neat integrated loop, which is gonna give you extra grip, which on a large phone like the Ultra is especially important. Uh, and then the wallet itself can actually hold up to six cards or cards and cash thanks to having dual pockets. These are really well thought out and well-designed products. So to upgrade your Galaxy S24 Ultra with MacBack, be sure to head to the links in the description and use code Dion15 for 15% off your order. On the subject of battery, let me show you the most important battery setting to change and to also preserve and extend your phone's battery health, as this is gonna be crucial to the longevity of your device. And to do this, we're gonna make sure to turn on battery protection. So first we're gonna go into settings and scroll all the way down to where we find device care. And then we're gonna tap on battery. 
And here we go. First, you want to make sure that battery protection is turned on. And once that's turned on, we can tap into that and then choose different layers of battery protection. So you can choose either between basic, adaptive, as well as maximum. Now I'm going to just explain these bottom two as these two here are the most important. And the first here is adaptive, which is what I currently have. And what this is essentially going to do is track your charging habits. So let's say you charge your phone, uh, you plug it in at say 11 p.m. each night and then unplug it at, I don't know, 7 or 6 a.m. the next morning. What that's going to do is it's going to learn that habit. And then when you plug your phone in at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., it's first going to charge your phone up to 80% and then wait with the remaining 20% till closer to when you typically wake up and unplug your phone. Now, this is going to slow the charge process and thus help preserve battery life. It's going to generate less heat and less wear on the battery. So this is the, uh, the, the setting that I use and the one that I recommend for most. Now, if you want to take this one step further, you can also set this to maximum, and that's actually going to set a cap to your battery capacity. It's going to not charge above 80%. Now, on a large phone like the S24 Ultra, that may be possible as it has really great battery life. Personally, I don't want to lose 20% of my battery capacity, but if your aim is to really push the longevity of your phone, or more specifically, your battery health, you can and opt to turn this on. But I think for most people, the adaptive mode here is gonna be the sweet spot. This next one is really neat as it's actually going to make your phone feel faster and we're going to do this by changing the animation speed. So what we're going to do is in the main settings page, scroll all the way down to where you find about this phone, tap into that here, and then we're going to go ahead and tap on software information. And then from here, you're going to locate the build number and then tap on that five times. So one, two, three, four, five. And that's not going to enter the developer mode. Now, as in my case, I'm already in developer mode, but if you haven't done this before, you'll have to tap that five times. And then if we go ahead and go back and then go back once more, we'll find some new options here under developer options. And then tapping into that here, if we scroll to roughly uh, the halfway mark here, we should have an option to change the animation speed. And there it is. So a little bit below the halfway mark here, we have three options. We can change the window animation scale, the transition, as well as the animator during scale. So these are all things that we can change the duration from. So for example, the window animation, we can actually turn this off to, I recommend to 0.5x. That's going to speed up the transition. You can also choose to turn it on entirely or make it slower if you like. Uh, but I think the 0.5 mark is a great way to make your phone feel just a little bit more snappy when you're using it. And this brings us to the Galaxy AI features. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go over the features in themselves because I've already done that in a different video. But instead, I do want to show you some important settings to change to make sure that all of these features are running on your phone. As some of these will be on by default, but others won't be. So if we jump into the settings page here, uh, we're then going to scroll to where we find advanced features. There we go. And then we're going to tap on advanced intelligence. That'll be the first option here. And what you want to do is want to make sure that these are on and activated. So for example, in Samsung notes here, you want to make sure that that is turned on. This is going to help you summarize uh, as well as reword paragraphs uh, in your notes app. And the same thing goes for your voice recorder as well. So you want to make sure that all of these settings here, or at least these features, rather the ones that you plan to use are activated by tapping into each of these menus. Now, the AI feature that I showed just quickly at the start of this clip, uh, this one here, the uh, circle to search feature, one of my favorites, uh, to activate that, it's actually in a different menu. So what we're going to do there for that is we're going to go back and then we're going to tap on the display here. So scroll down to where we find display. There it is. And then we're going to tap on navigation bar where we were earlier. And instead here at the bottom, we have the circle to search option and you want to make sure that that is activated and to trigger circle to search, just press and hold on the uh, bar here at the bottom and you can circle anything on your screen to then instantly look it up. Great feature. Let's improve the sound quality here of our Galaxy phone. So to do this in the main settings page, we're going to tap onto sound and vibration. And then we're going to scroll down to where we find sound quality and effects. And you want to make sure that Dolby Atmos and Dolby Atmos for gaming are on. This is going to vastly improve the sound quality that you get from your phone, especially when you're using headphones or speakers. I don't really understand why this isn't on by default, but you want to make sure that these are on here. Also, if you want to apply a system-wide EQ, this is where you do it. We can go in and tap that. You can create a fully custom EQ as well, or set from a or choose from a preset as well. Personally, I like to keep this on normal, but again, the most important things here are going to be those Dolby Atmos settings. And make sure that those are on. This next one here is super useful and is actually one I only found out about recently and I'm really excited to share it here. And what you can do is you can actually have an app constantly run in the background and essentially force that app open. So let's say here, for example, you're filling out an online form. Let's say I'm booking a flight or something, uh, but I need to get a detail from another app. So I got to scroll uh, or go home rather, open up, say, I don't know, my wallet app or find some sort of detail, my email. Uh, but then I go back to my Chrome window and the page will have refreshed or the app will have closed in the background and have lost all my progress. This is a very annoying thing and it's definitely happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you too. But what you can actually do is force an application to stay open in the background. So let's say we take this uh, Chrome page here, for example, what you want to do is open up the app switcher. So simply uh, swipe up here and then we get to this view. 
And then what you're going to want to do is tap on the app icon here, and then we can have the option to keep open. And if we go ahead and tap that, you'll see there's that little lock here. And no matter what we do on our phone, that app is going to stay open and running. So if I go back here, uh, you'll see that the app will never refresh uh, and it will always be running. So super useful feature to have, again, to make sure that you don't lose progress on a web form, uh, even a game, for example. This works in any application, and you can see it's indicated here by that little lock. And of course, to undo this, we go ahead and tap on the little, lo little lock. As you can see, that will now disappear and the app will just run like normal. Now I want to show you how to lock a specific app. So let's say I have this uh, flight list here pulled up in Chrome and I want to show that to someone, uh, but I don't want them to be able to go home and to say swipe through my phone. What it can do is actually lock a specific app to make sure that person can only access that specific application. So let me first show you how this works. If we go in and swipe up here to the same app switcher, we tap on the app icon and then we can actually tap on the pin this app button. And as you can see, if I now try and swipe home, it won't work. I can't do anything. I can't even open my uh, notification shade or anything. All I can do is look at the content that is on this specific app. Now, let's say the phone is ha handed back to me and I want to go home. All you want to do is swipe and then hold for a second, enter in your pin like so. And there we go. It's now been deactivated and I can swipe home again like normal. Now, this feature doesn't work out of the box. So there is a setting that you want to turn on. Let me show you how. So first we're going to jump into settings and then over on the main page here, we're going to go into security and privacy tap into that. And then if we scroll down here to where we find more security and privacy, then we scroll to where we find pin app, there it is at the bottom, and you want to make sure that that is turned on. And this way, when you are in the app switcher, it's going to give you that additional menu to pin this app. In other words, lock the application, super useful. You know how when you type in a password, uh, it will briefly show. So with every character you type, it will briefly show what you've just typed. And this can be useful to make it more easy to see what you're typing. But of course, it does reveal your passwords to people around you or I don't know, cameras or anything like that. So if say you want to have a little bit more privacy when typing in your password, there is a way to make your passwords entirely invisible. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So over in the main settings app here, uh, page here, we're going to scroll to where we find security and privacy scroll all the way down to where we find more security settings. And then here we go, make passwords visible. You want to make sure that that is turned off. And now when you're typing in your password, it will never preview the characters, making it much more private. All right, this next one is super useful, uh, not for everyone, but I think for many people, including myself, it is a really useful feature to have. And that is a great way to protect your data if ever your phone is lost or stolen. What it's basically going to mean is if there is say your phone is lost or stolen uh, and that person tries to unlock it, types in the wrong passcode 20 times in a row, your phone is automatically going to erase itself and also remove all of your content, meaning that even when your phone is lost and no longer secure, your data is. Now, again, this is a feature that I definitely use, but I also appreciate that this may not be for everyone. If, say, you are a parent who may have a child trying to log into their, uh, log into their phone, you don't want your phone to be constantly erasing itself. Uh, but other than that, I think for most people, this is useful, especially if you travel often or if, say, you've lost a phone in the past. Uh, again, the phone is expensive, don't get me wrong, but of course, your personal data is ultimately most important, and this is a way to keep that safe. So let me go in and show you how to activate this. So over in settings here, we're going to tap on lock screen. So scroll down to where we find a lock screen and AOD. And then we're going to tap on secure lock settings. There it is. Type in our pin. And here we have the third option, auto factory reset. And you want to make sure that that is turned on. Again, it's not for everyone, but for most people, I think, including myself, this is a really handy feature to have. This next one, we're going to be naming our phone. Now, this is super useful, especially if, say, you're trying to connect to it from another device or via Bluetooth, having it in a list of Samsung Galaxy Ultras, uh, it's great to be able to see your own name to know which phone is yours. So to do this, uh, what we're going to do is scroll all the way to the bottom of the settings page, tap on about this phone, and then we want to tap on edit, and here we can rename the phone. So I recommend you just add your name plus the model of your phone so you can easily identify it. This next one is one of my favorite features, specifically on the S24 Ultra, and that is one-handed mode. Now, this is a large phone, but having one-handed mode makes everything so much more accessible and easy to use, even with one hand, allowing you to stretch to the other end of the display or even reach those upper corners, and you can easily come out of it uh, and use your phone again like normal. So let me show you how to activate this. So if we jump into settings here, we're going to scroll to where we find advanced features. There it is tap into that. And then here we will find one handed mode and you want to make sure that that is activated. And to activate it, you simply want to do a little swipe gesture at the bottom of the screen and then repeat the same gesture to bring it to full screen. Again, uh, you can see that when we are in one handed mode, we can even move the window around, we can move it up. There we go, we can go ahead and reposition it, we can move it up. And then we can also change sides. So if say you're right handed, you probably want it on the right side. I'm left handed. So I prefer to have it here on the left. And again, to exit from this, simply swipe down, and then you'll be out of one handed mode. Really great feature. 
Next, I want to show you a super useful setting, uh, and that is to enable to get more functionality out of your side button. So of course you can press and hold it, but you can also double click it to activate a function. You can see I've set mine here to activate the torch. Uh, so really useful setting to change. And let me show you how to set this up. So we're going to jump into settings, tap on advanced features, and then here we have side button. So first of all, uh, we can of course determine what a press and hold will do. So that will either wake up Bixby or turn off your phone or bring off the power off menu. Uh, but you can also, again, turn on a double press. You want to make sure that it's activated and you can have it set the uh, to launch the camera or really to use any app. So we tap on the action gear here. Uh, you can see that we can set it to pretty much any application, even some system functions like, for example, the torch, which is what I use. Uh, super useful feature to have. And again, brings more functionality out of the side button. And last but not least, if ever say your phone is running a bit slow or not really running the way it should be, you can actually run a very thorough diagnostics right on your phone, do a full device checkup uh, to see if there's any problems. This is also something I really recommend if ever say you're going to buy uh, one of these phones, say used, uh, this is a great way to make sure that that phone is fully functional. So to do this, simply swipe up to your app drawer here, and then we're going to search for members. Now this app will come pre-installed on your Galaxy phone here. Go ahead and tap into that. And then from there, we're going to tap on support and then we can tap on phone diagnostics. So we go ahead and run that here and then we can have the option to test all. And you can see all the parameters that this is going to test everything from your battery status, including your battery health, your microphones, your fingerprint sensor, uh, your camera, everything is going to be checked. Now this will take around 15 minutes to do or so. So it does involve a little bit of work, but it's, I highly recommend doing this again, if your phone is not acting the way it should, or you're going to buy one of these used just to make sure this phone is in good condition. And there you have it. Hopefully you've learned something new in this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and also subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching and take care.